What's going on everyone? It's Justin here and we're in Apple Park for WWDC 2023. I'm so excited to be back because this year, Apple announced an entry into a new product category for the first time since the Apple Watch in 2015. And that is the Apple Vision Pro. Let's go ahead and talk about it and give you a first look of the hardware elements itself, which honestly looks so incredible. And there's a lot to cover here. With this being huge elements of technology for the future, it was really exciting to see what Apple's take on this was. And the first thing is hardware. I feel like with AR and VR headsets, the biggest lacking point is often in the hardware and just that it isn't practical yet. But in this case, Apple's launched their own headset that comes in at a hefty price point of $3,500, but the hardware checks off every single box imaginable from the cameras to the sensors, the singular piece of curved glass, the full aluminum body, as well as the way the battery is engineered on the side, the two micro OLED displays that feature 23 million pixels each that have more pixels than you'll find on a 4K TV on each side. I mean, they really didn't pull any stops there. It also features the M2 processor as well as an R1 chip that takes the input from a dozen cameras five sensors, and six microphones. The R1 eliminates the lag and streams images to the display within 12 milliseconds, which is eight times faster than the blink of an eye. It also features Apple's first 3D camera, as well as an advanced spatial audio system that takes the audio technology that Apple's really refined throughout their audio products in the past few years and puts it into a product that is meant to immerse you in the scene. Some of the really cool features include the capture capabilities when it comes to audio and video and being able to relive moments in the most unique and kind of immersive way possible. The Vision Pro is powered by Vision OS, which builds on decades of innovation and UI experience from Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS, and it's the first operating system designed from the ground up for spatial computing. The 3D interface really focuses on engaging with the environment around you and with a dozen cameras, it is able to do that very accurately. The control is also obviously a very important part of Vision OS and the whole AR experience. And it utilizes control through hands, eyes, and voice with all of the cameras and the microphones built in to give you the most intuitive experience possible. When it comes to the look standpoint, I think the design is as good as it gets. Having that transparent effect is a really unique take. And I think the biggest priority when it comes to AR is not taking away from reality entirely, not only for the user itself, but also for the people around you. They can kind of see you through the headset itself as if it was transparent, which I think is pretty interesting. At $3,500, it's not something that everyone's just gonna go ahead and pick up, but it is really cool. And as someone who admitted is not really into the whole AR or VR stuff at the moment just because of some of the hardware kinks. I'm really excited to see if this will change my mind, but it's not going to be available until early next year. So when it comes to the Mac side of things, the 15 inch MacBook Air is also something that I was really excited about. It features the M2 processor and after seeing the redesign of the MacBook Air last year, it's honestly become one of my favorite products. And although I do utilize a lot of the power that my M2 MacBook Pro is able to offer and take full advantage of it when it comes to video editing, a lot of times I'm just doing admin work and just want something light, but I am used to having a large display. So the 15 inch MacBook is something that I'm super stoked about. And on top of that, the MacBook Air M2 also has a price reduction of $100. Some of the other news in the Mac lineup include an update to the Mac Studio. First announced last year, that has become my main computer and I spec'd it out to the brim with eight terabytes of storage, the most memory possible, but now you can actually order it with 50% more memory. And when it comes to GPU and CPU performance, there are also some spec bumps there. But honestly, if you already have the top end M1 Ultra Mac Studio, then you don't really need to upgrade in my opinion, because even as someone who is always tempted to buy the latest and greatest and most powerful computer. I've honestly been really happy with my Mac Studio maxed out when editing 6K video and sometimes even 8K video. For people who demand even more power though, the Mac Pro finally has its update. It has the same hardware as before from the exterior and design elements, but on the inside, it has been updated after quite a long wait. And it is the last Apple product to kind of have that Apple Silicon transformation. And it features the top end M2 Ultra processor with the memory options and 
and the best part is the expandability inside. Being able to expand your own memory is a feature that I really like, but also being able to add different cards and like accelerators, whether it's for music or video, is a feature that some industries would really appreciate. But you also have eight Thunderbolt ports and just having that expandability is always a great option. Personally, I don't feel like I need to switch over to the Mac Pro once again. I did have the Mac Pro for many years. I spent over $20,000 on it, but I believe the top spec Mac Pro is just about $12,000. And I mean, compared to what you're able to pay before for the Mac spec, you're getting a lot more power. And it's just cool that now the unified lineup is finally here. And I mean, that two year transformation roadmap that Apple was talking about a few years ago has definitely progressed very well. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video and joining me at Apple Park. But stay tuned because I can't wait to get my hands on all these products and I'll see you all in the next one.